Tutors, welcome to week 15 Fossil Prints. Uh, to start out, our Bible connection is going to be a devotion called Dinosaur Rock, and it is found in this really cool devotional book, Indescribable. It is a hundred devotions based on God and science. I've printed off a copy of the devotion and highlighted the key points. You can just read the highlighted parts, or if you have time, you can do the entire devotion. So today we are going to look at, examine, and make different types of fossils. Great questions for the kids. Have you ever seen a fossil? What kind? Where did you find it? What are some different types of fossils? So there are four different types of fossils that we'll be focusing on. The first is a mold fossil. This is a fossilized impression of a plant or animal. There will be one of these in each of the science rooms, so you'll either get the fish or the frog. Next, we're going to focus on cast fossils. This is when sediment or debris or mineral fill up the mold fossil. It creates a cast of the empty space inside of the mold fossil. The next fossil that we're going to focus on are trace fossils. So with trace fossils like footprints, these show the existence of an animal, but aren't necessarily a part of an animal. And then we get to true form fossils. What most people think of when you think of a fossil, these are the large dinosaur bones, skeletons, mummified or frozen remains of mammoths. So we're able to connect this to science last week by asking the children to recall the three types of rock from week 14, um, metamorphic, igneous, and sedimentary. Where are most fossils found? They're found in sedimentary rock, and there's a really good reason for this. Uh, the igneous and metamorphic rock is too violently created for the fossils to withstand the pressure and the heat, and so most fossils in those rocks have been destroyed. Uh, week 15 Science Connection, are there fossils on each continent's highest mountain? Yes and no. So I will have a list of um, which fossils you can find on which of each continent's highest mountains in your tutor binder. And then next, theorize how did fossils end up on the tops of some of these mountains. So now we're going to examine some fossils and I'm very excited because I used some of my rock hound resources. These are people who love rocks with a passion. Um, and they actually donated some fossils to us for our experiment. So these petrified wood samples came from Utah and Montana. Um, what is petrified wood? It is not wood anymore. It used to be wood. Um, and then the groundwater, which flows through the sediment over time, replaced the wood with mineral, which is why when you Clean it together, it's like hitting rocks together because it essentially is a rock now. The minerals replace the shape of the wood. I'm going to show you some actual really neat fossils. These were all found uh, fairly close to here. These were found in Tennessee waters by my mother. Um, so we have some really neat what look like screws. These are actually the column of a sea lily. They're animal fossils. These are not plants, uh, but they look like plants. They're sea lilies. And it is a type of animal. So this is what the crinoid sea lily looks like today. It is an animal. And the fossils that we have are actually part of a column, which is right here. There have been a lot of names attributed to these over the years. Some people call them screw tops. Um, some people used to think that they were Native American money, but they are actually the fossilized remains of a sea lily. 
I used to find these all the time when I was growing up. We used to use them as beads to make necklaces. And you can see why people called them Native American money. They looked like coins, but these are actually individual discs of the sea lily. So we're going to recreate how some fossils are made. Each student is gonna start with a paper plate and an individual baggie of clay. So have them take the clay out of the bag and then pick an object from the goodie box that I will have. There'll be an assortment of animals, shells, bones, or items like the dinosaur to make trace fossils like footprints. Once they get it flattened out, you're just gonna have them make the imprint of the object that they wanna do. I am going to do this toy dinosaur footprint. Um, when the original bone or shell dissolves, it's gonna leave behind an empty space, which is what this is, and that is called a mold. They actually have the cast fossil and mold fossil switched in this. This was probably a typo but I wanted to touch on it since we do use this book. They said if nothing collects in the prints, the mud would dry, forming what is called a cast fossil. That's incorrect. It would create a mold fossil. When the sediment fills the imprint, that would actually be what you would call a cast fossil. So I will have those um, crossed out in the number 128 prints in our book. Make sure they write their name on the paper plate because we will be letting these dry and taking a look at them again next week. There, that's perfect. I have my fossil cast on a paper plate with my name on it and this will dry be ready for next week. After it dries, this will be what it's like when we take it apart. So then each student will keep the clay fossil mold and the plaster fossil cast to take home next week.